Καλημέρα σας. Good morning. Ε, θα ήθελα να πω ότι οι αγαπητοί οργανωτές κάνουν ένα λάθος στον τίτλο. My dear Ο πραγματικός τίτλος που είχαμε συμφωνήσει ήταν η ιστορική αναδρομή που κάνουν οι μόνοι στις υποδοσφυρίες. Η παράδειγμα συνεχίζεται. Έτσι θα πρέπει να έχουμε αφήσει ότι η ανησυχία συνεχίζεται. Βλέπετε, δεν είναι μόνο για την ιστορική αναδρομή της Ελλάδας Standard of Energy Conservation. Θα δημιουργήσω αυτό το σπίτι στην Γρήκ. Επίσης, θα δημιουργήσω ένα μήνυμα σε όσους που έχουν πραγματικά εξαλτήσει το μόνο μου, το μόνο μου. Θα πρέπει να σκεφτούμε ότι 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 θα πρέπει να σκεφτούμε Our democratic institutions and our very heart and soul, which is why I'm delivering the speech in Greek. And we have actually offered such proof through history. It seems that many people have failed to realize they've committed historical mistakes, but I'm here to prove that once more. Dear colleagues, standard practice for the European directives in Greece and in other European countries dictates that the countries that are really affected by such directives are not there. So normally when such pieces of legislation are promulgated in the level of the EU, the countries that are mostly directly impacted on by such regulations are not there and then fines and penalties are imposed. Why one in the meantime, specificities have not been taken into account, nor has the legislation, the national legislation or national production been taken into account. And this is, this gives rise to two issues. First, this first is a indicative of a deficit, a democratic deficit for the people who do not have public administration and do not have democratic consultation and deliberation processes in place. And then another issue, of course, also emerges and becomes quite apparent because such pieces of legislation to us are serving specific interests and alibis are just used, be they real or virtual. And so when it comes to saving energy, great uh, interest has been shown for sectors, for countries that are not dealing with particular problems. I mean, in the Nordic countries, there are more cost-effective buildings, and the Nordic countries actually are the ones that produce materials, apparatuses, and technologies that the rest of the EU countries are expected to consume for quite a a number of years now, we are waiting for a directive for energy use in industrial plants, and we're also waiting for another directive that will not just involve itself with CO2, but rather radio and nuclear radioactive waste. We've not seen any of these two happen, and it seems we will have to wait for a long time. And it was thus, uh, back in 2002, December the 16th, we had Directive 9.1 for the energy efficiency or energy performance of buildings, including a number of objectives. The decrease of the dependency of the EU on imported raw materials from other countries, especially from Russia, add. And the objectives would also include a lower cost and also better competitiveness. This list of targets, this list of objectives, as listed in the directive, concern competitiveness at the level of the EU, the economy of the EU, not the national economies. And from that point onwards, since 2002, we've been through a difficult path involving 75 certified engineers who are working with the technical chamber, setting up committees, and so far they have all been working without being paid on a voluntary basis. Many of them are actually amongst you here today. Others who were not residents of Athens had to fly to Athens and they never got a refund for the money they paid for their tickets. Let me acquaint you with the background of this whole directive. Directive 2002-91 AC of the European Parliament and the Council uh, that was issued back in 2002. We were under an obligation in view of the year 2006. The country was fined for not implementing this directive in 2008. Then 
the directive was translated literally and voted by the parliament back in May 9, 2008. The ministry who was in charge of handling all that was the Ministry of Development. We had uh, received a copy of the relevant legislation and we were given a few days to prepare. December 2008 was the deadline. Back then, we acknowledged that we'd missed out another opportunity, an opportunity that was great for the sake of the country, the environment, the quality of life, and ensuring and protecting the interests of the citizens. We had basic points in which we disagreed with the methodology that the ministry was suggesting. The Ministry of uh, Development made some suggestions that were too complicated and were not in line with the relevant national legislation or the building directives in Greece. I can indicatively mention some points in which we disagreed. For example, we had primary buildings. They were aimed for different uses, and so the legislation was not in line with the respective legislation that concerned tertiary sector units. I guess if that happened, if we did indeed had a an energy performance building regulation that was like the one that the ministry aimed for, everything would have been ideal, but we had to make sure it was somehow in line with the relevant building legislation. This is an analytical list of the equipment that we were expected to have should we have agreed with methodology that the ministry was recommended, which means that each and every energy auditor and inspector would need to spend at least 60,000 euro for such equipment to be purchased. And of course, there was someone to profit from that because such equipment is not produced here in Greece and it had to be imported. There was the relevant presidential decree which provided for the involvement of others, not just engineers. Moreover, the presidential decree provided for 150 hours training offered to energy auditors, or rather building and, uh, auditors, and 71 hours for those inspecting the premises for heating and air conditioning. He, the ministry insisted that there was funds there were funds available through the NSRF so we could use the money. So far, nothing has happened. We have only had training seminars hosted, which we paid for, the technical chamber, that is. Moreover, according to the ministry's directives, uh, the certification would be made by private entities. And we also disagreed with the so-called YEPE, the advising committee, which was entrusted with a number of capacities, which we disagreed with. We had more than a handful of meetings with the ministry. We prepared our own proposal in order for us to come up with the relevant reference building. We also came up with additional proposals, which we made to the ministry. We asked for the energy certification of materials and apparatuses for a trial period of 18 months. We also asked for training seminars for those working in the urban construction field. We also asked that a committee be set up with a view to managing discrepancies between, or rather, uh, bridging the gaps and voids that were in the legislation. We also asked for a certain limit to be set in terms of edge energy inspections and audits per energy inspector for a month. The cost of such uh, audits, we ask that be determined after consultation. We also came up with proposals on energy studies and surveys. And we also asked that the obsolete proposals and ideas that are part and parcel of the old legislation be done away with. But it seems that another option was taken by the ministry. And there were companies, we asked that companies that would be involved in the field of energy audits and inspections be specialized in that field. What, what, what happened next? Where did the consultation get us? Chaos followed. The final proposal that the Ministry of Development came up with involved an energy, a, a candidate energy inspector who would have to be trained, who would have to get a certificate from a private entity and eventually take a test at the Ministry. All three, that is. We, moreover, exerted 
pressures on several unions, including Hellas, the Temen Pomida. The Ministry of Development kept changing our deal, kept reconsidering. And then the minister asked and agreed that the energy audits would cost one uh, euro per square meter. Well, that was the agreement back then. That was Minister Hatzidakis. Now, Mr. Hatzidakis is currently still Minister for Development, but it seems that the energy cost would be discrepant. Maybe you recall that there was an official statement made, or rather the, the, the state supported actions with a view to having households replace their old air conditioning units. And of course, foreign companies would make profit again. Then we had the 2009 election. There was a change in the scope of responsibilities. There was a new ministry established, and now, or rather, the Ministry of Environment was now responsible for handling such projects. And so, Margarita Gervasili, who works for the Ministry of the Environment, uh, is here, and it's a fortunate event, and it was a good thing that when the scope of responsibilities was moved over to the Ministry of Environment, at least we were co-host. And so, the Kenag proposal, Kenag being the Energy Performance Buildings Regulation. So Kenag's proposal, or rather the proposal the Technical Chamber of Greece made as far as Kenag was concerned, was finalized. It was then submitted to the Ministry for the Environment. It concerned all usages, possible uses of buildings, and we insisted on having a reference building. The consultation was complete. We had the second version of Kenak. The presidential decree followed back in 2010, January 31st. Let's not forget that the previous version had been discussed in 2008. And so in 2010, April the 9th, at long last, Kenak was approved. And on October the 6th, 2010, a few months later, for that matter, the respective presidential decree regarding energy uh, inspectors was also signed and approved. Out of the proposals the technical chamber had come up with, some were integrated in Kenak and the presidential decree. Those referred to the reference building. Additions had been made to that through the Ministry of Energy and the Environment. The required qualifications and skills that the energy auditors needed to have were finalized. The Ministry of, for the Environment finalized the procedure for licensing companies and licensing not energy auditors by priving private companies. And then we also have brought everything in line with the national legislation. All these lists of all this list of points uh, did not go without saying, dear colleagues, rest assured that we had to wage our own war in order for us to get those points in the presidential decree and the relevant regulation. We, on our own, we did a lot. And I insist on that. On, the, on our own, we've been doing a lot. We've undertaken several initiatives. We also uh, hosted training seminars in order to provide relevant information information to our colleagues. We set up a committee that is there in order to find gaps and voids in the legislation and ask for clarifications. And we also made sure that we proceed with making proposals in order for us to be faced with no delays. But uh, it turned out that delays were there because many of the people who work for the uh, building agencies, the state building agencies, had no idea about the new regulation and some of them didn't even care, let me be honest about it. 
Several proposals of ours, nonetheless, were not endorsed. Proposals that touched on the energy certification of materials and facilities because the ministry was not in place or not in a position to shoulder the responsibility for that. The trial period, uh, which was supposed to be 18 months long, was not opted for. The limit for energy inspections per month was not taken into account, nor was the issue of fees to be paid per inspection. We'd also come up with a proposal regarding uh, the obstacles that energy inspections would be faced with. So far, what's missing still is the presidential decree for the so-called building identity. And I guess there is scope until it's there to introduce such points that are still missing. We also had suggested that a register of colleagues of ours be open because there are many skills and qualified colleagues of ours, but it seems that there were interventions by others and others tried to make sure that we do not take a part in this whole process. Energy studies, we asked that they be incorporated in the database of IPECA, which is the Ministry of Environment. We've agreed on that maybe to dozens of times, but so far nothing's happened. There were disagreements on the part of people who didn't want the Technical Chamber of Greece to have access to the very quality of energy inspections. And I think that the special secretary, Ms. Karabasili, was also in charge of handling that. And what followed next? Well, next, uh, the Technical Chamber of Greece came uh, up with the technical directives and specifications in cooperation with the National Observatory. We came came up with a software. Again, we, the technical chamber, set in place a mechanism to make sure that all engineers are kept up to date. We keep updating the relevant technical directives which we issue. The technical chamber of Greece was in charge of producing the curriculum for the training seminars. We actually distributed that curriculum and we put in place an electronic examination system. And in the meantime, we've been constantly pestering the Ministry for the Environment in order for it to assume responsibility for the twists and turns to the system. And by October 31st, 2011, we had the ruling, the ruling or the decision for educate Training and uh, training energy inspectors and having exams for them. Let it be noted that the temporary energy inspectors were invited on the 24th of June 2010. Ideally, if the ministry's relevant committee produces the exam themes, then at best we're going to have the first exam for future energy inspectors by February 2013. After all of that, remember, this is a project that we've been working on for years. Then it was high time for us to eventually be in line with the relevant EU directive, the Energy Performance Buildings Directive. And still, what's missing is the energy inspectors for buildings. It seems that this is a summer's dream. Uh, in any case, this is one of our denunciations that we're going to make we, the technical chamber, to the communities. Because you see, Greeks are expected to have a lot of money, I guess. People think that we have so much money that we can proceed with immediately implementing everything, including uh, embracing uh, renewable energy sources and buying many uh, pieces of, of equipment from countries such as Germany that are faced with problems, I guess, and they do not have a huge production. On an ironic note, I mean, now we have a lack of money and we're expected to help Germany by buying its products. In any case, the new directive also includes a two MOU, Memorandum of Understanding Commitments, or so we were told by the ministry. 
First, we have the issue of the minimum values. The minimum values will have to turn into maximum values. One euro per square meter will now be the maximum value, the maximum price. And that is a fee that will apply in the case of such audits conducted, because it seems that one euro per square meter is detrimental to the competitiveness of the economy. We believe that this is detrimental to the competitiveness of the eurozone. And then we we are expected to do away with the licensing for energy inspectors. They, this type of profession is considered now as a so-called closed profession, which means that it will have to open. Once there is a permanent registry for energy inspectors in place, then they're going to be licensed. And this is considered by the Memorandum of Understanding as a crime. Such surprising measures that are included in the Memorandum of Understanding were actually recommended by Pomida. Mr. Paradias, who's in charge, has time and again communicated his ideas and Pomida's ideas through the television stations and cha channels of Greece. These huge technocrats of the Troika have examined, thoroughly examined such proposals, and then they decided to incorporate those proposals in the Memorandum of Understanding, and these are supposedly the profound structural changes that Greece needs to get the next tranche of the loan, and we're very proud of the responsibility that the Ministry of Finance has shown uh, the government overall, because there seems to be no valid proof for such proposals. We told the Ministry of uh, the Environment that we're okay with the new fee, one euro per square meter, just as long as this applies to the price of fuel. And then the ministry, I guess, was very uh, annoyed by such a proposal. We are going to turn to the European Commission and we will ask the European Commission whether the people who represent it within the Troika count on the EU legislation or other legislation for that matter. And we have to be self-critical. The Technical Chamber of Greece is just a union of people that is doing nothing. We are just sitting around doing nothing, and yes, we have to get rid of the technical chamber of Greece just to make sure that there will be lots and lots of engineers, Greek engineers, who will be great and very, very cheap because they are the only thing we can export as a country. We can export our scientists, including mechanics and engineers, I guess. This is how the whole Memorandum of Understanding was drafted, counting on allegedly structural changes that are servicing very specific interests of very few. Which brings me back to the issue of saving energy. This country, which is called Greece, has achieved its targets in, ter in terms of energy savings, in terms of energy consumption, and especially consumption of electrical power. We've actually exceeded the, the target of 20%, we've reached 40, we will go even better, do even better as regards oil, not thanks to the regulations and directives, but due to the fact that the Greek people have no money, no money to pay for electrical power and oil. I do believe that we have to be commended and congratulated by the European Union because we are saving energy. We managed to do that first amongst the 27. The Technical Chamber of Greece was established in 1923, one year before the Asia Minor demise. It was put in place to serve the growth targets of the country. Since 1984, it has been helping a poor country. But it seems that we are working on the wrong basis because there was a lot missing in terms of the directions we've taken, the path we've opted for in planning. And that is what got us where we are today. Sooner or later, we, the technical experts of Greece, the licensed engineers of Greece, will be called upon once more to help this country out of this crisis and help this country build up and become productive. It is our duty, especially today, no matter how much we're being attacked, no matter how much people are trying to humiliate us, no matter how much people want to get rid of the technical chamber, I'm sure you've heard about that, no matter how much people are giving us a very hard time and are asking us to pay huge amounts of money and asking us to pay more social security fees and higher taxes, nonetheless, we will go on resisting. So we will put up a fight and we will succeed.
We will manage, and that is why our top priority when it comes to implementing any directive ought to be the following. First, we have to give priority to Greek products, Greek facilities, Greek infrastructure which we have to enrich and we have to enrich that infrastructure and we have to also enrich our know-how and expertise and that is why among others we have stricken a strategic partnership with ASHRAE when it comes to regulations and we are still discussing the future certification of Greek engineers and companies for them to work outside the confines of the EU. I would like to thank you on that note for lending an ear to what I had to say and I'm looking forward to your involvement and participation. Let's all gather outside the Ministry of Labor at noon so as for us to make sure that we do not agree with the social security fights. Thank you very much. Other questions for Mr. Spidis' presentation? Mr. Spidis? Δεν έχουμε τίποτα, έτσι είναι σας αφέστατος. You were very clear, sir. Ήρθε μια ερώτηση από τον κύριο Παπαδανή. Το τέταρτο που διαφέρει. Maybe Mr. Spritzis would like to take the floor and discuss about ways of managing space, space management in Greece, because we have lots of deficits there. Δεν έχουμε καθόλου έλλειψη χώρου. There's no lack of space, for one thing, no lack whatsoever. Since World War II, we've been using a very wrong model, which is counting on just growth for Athens and Thessaloniki. And so we've created two monsters, Athens and Thessaloniki. There is no balanced growth and there is no productive structure. You can't have 80% of the population of this country live in cities and expect to have primary manufacturing and production and expect to have all sorts of productive processes happen. This is the main reason why we disagreed with the proposal that Mr. Polizos had come up with because he is the head of the authority that is in charge of the master plan of Athens. His proposal did not endorse decentralization. So we can't proceed with embracing activities and actions that will solely aim at Athens and Thessaloniki alone and cut them off from the rest of the planning for Greece. We have to have an integral plan, and our master plan has to follow those lines. For us, the most important thing is to put in place very specific terms in terms of the master planning of Greece overall and then we're going to discuss how we're going to manage urban areas because in urban areas after all we are living in an inhumane life. Obviously when you're faced with policies and politics that suggest that it's important for us to have areas, open spaces that we have to refurbish neighborhoods. For those of us who were born in Athens I guess you all know, we all know how difficult it is for us not to have a place to play. When you're a child, I was born and raised close to downtown Athens, Ambelokibi. There was an open area there, and then it became a block of flats. Now there's nothing. Obviously, we need all that, but all of that, unfortunately and obviously, cannot happen when you have these skyrocketed real estate prices in Athens just for the sake of servicing the needs or interests of some. If you want to have an environmental friendly policy, if you want to upgrade the urban environment and landscape of Athens and the big urban areas, you have first and foremost to proceed with decentralization. So you have to make plans for decentralization. This will help manage spaces properly. Thank you. A question by Mr. Karelabopoulos. I have many questions. I have so many. Allow me to translate your own title. I am an engineer. 
and I want to know where we're headed to. To my mind, you, the technical chamber, stand for all engineers. So there is a subgroup that is, or rather a small group of engineers working in the ministry, is actually asking us to do things, we and you, the technical chamber, who stands for everyone. No, I didn't say that. I said that the European Union is sending its own directives. These directives stand uh, for specific interests. When those directives are promulgated, when they're formulated in Brussels, the country is not there. We are not there. We are not involved in the process. So we are not standing up for our interests. And there are more directives, not just this one. All directives go along those lines. Recently, the Minister of Finance, Mr. Sturnaras, who's actually knows about industrial plans, he's been there. Well, now he's minister, minister of finance, and he signed a political decision that harmonizes 300 European standards. I can give you an example out of those 300 standards. What about the ASH standard? Because there is ASH that is a, has a high concentration in pyrite. Notice here, I think she knows more about that than me. So since he endorsed the this standard, now we cannot use ashes that are produced in the industrial plants of Greece in Kozani because its content is high in calcium, not pyrite, pyrite. So if we want to make sure that we have proper cement products to use, we have to import German such products or French such products. I believe that if this country continues to has such a leadership that is always going against the Greek interests, then we're going to make no progress whatsoever, never, ever. As far as the Ministry of Environment is concerned, Margarita Gravasil is here, so she will tell you more. She knows better. While she was Special Secretary, she just had two people in her staff and one assistant. What could she possibly do? She did. She tried. She did a lot. And I've said that many times, on many occasions, Margarita did her best. And she got stuck on the policy of the Ministry of Finance. Again, she bombed against it. The Ministry of Finance had agreed with having a special secretary in the Ministry of Environment for a one, but they had made sure that money would be there in order for those people who'd be seconded from other agencies or other state um, services. So you see, no people were there to help because nobody was seconded, money was not there. So you can't just allege you will proceed with structural changes or just christen those structural changes as such when they have not even come to their peak, although you, the leadership, allege that this is the peak. I mean, the peak of the structural reforms came when the proposal about doing away with the energy inspector's license, and then the fee, one euro per square meter. This is a joke. This is a, an ever bigger joke, which is quite revelatory, because I think there's been some sort of deal made between all previous governments and this particular government and the Troika. So hopefully the next government in power will not go along those lines. Ms. Karavasili, Ms. Karavasili, I know you're going to make a statement. And before you do, I know you're not working for the ministry anymore. I mean, you're not special secretary any longer. But since the technical chamber of Greece has offered what it's offered and had the, mini the, the chamber not done what it's done, then the energy savings would have achieved would not have been achieved. Let me tell you this. For the past 10 days, the chamber is not working, so we decided we wouldn't. And in the meantime, someone from the special agency for the inspectors came up with an idea, an idea that they acquainted your successor with, an idea concerning issuance of energy certificates. Too bad. Too bad because your successor supposedly is progressive. That's all I meant to say. Thank you very much. Ms. Karavasili. Picking up from where you just left off, 
And I agree that Christos, Mr. Spritzes, uh, was very objective in his presentation, giving us the background. Ms. Caravasili, would you like to introduce yourselves, especially for the sake of our foreign guests? I'm Margarita Caravasili. I'm an architect, I'm an urban engineer. I've worked for many years for the Ministry of Energy and the Environment. I was actually, up until recently, Special Secretary for the Environment and Energy. I was in charge of the inspection, energy inspection. It's a great pleasure to get to meet not just there, but also the observatory and the, ministry, the, the, the University of Thessaloniki and several other universities. It's a great pleasure to see you again, because we used to work back in 1994, all of us together. Back in 1994, we, all of us, embarked on this huge adventure, the great adventure of energy efficiency for buildings. And it took 18 years for the Greek state to realize how important energy performance can be, how important energy can be in terms of growth, and how important saving energy can be. There were some people who were considered as not so visionaries for years, us. But it took us 18 years, us as a country, to grow up, to mature, to get to know one another, to get on terms with one another, to be on terms with one another, and in order for us to consult and then have some sort of consensus. It's true that we came to compromise. Dialogue always leads to compromise if you want to have results, but at least we have now in place a framework, an institutional framework, which is complete and fully fledged. It was fortunate, I guess, for us back in 2010 to get to meet again. So it's, th it's good to me that we managed to get together in 2010. We we got what we got. But let's insist on the main message. The situation is very tough for Greece. Memorandums of understanding has been signed, have been signed. I don't know who came up with the proposals and what was included in terms of structural changes and energy in the memoranda. Uh, those of us who have been working for this to be achieved, we have to go on working. We have to proceed the way we've been proceeding. We have to go on helping the state. We have to improve what we have. The new directive needed to be incorporated, transposed to the Greek legislation, or else we would have to pay more fines and penalties, which is what we did. We did that in a satisfactory manner. Before I left the ministry, we were still ahead of time, and we were ahead in terms of modifying and amending the regulation, bearing in mind all the deficits, all the gaps, all the voids that became apparent once this regulation was used. Let's not forget that you do not know where the deficits are unless you start using the new regulation. The new Greek law for the liberalization of certain professions or so-called opening of professions is something that we came across. We were asked to open up the profession of the energy inspector. I had meetings with the technical assistance committee of the Troika twice. We negotiated the opening opening up of this profession of the energy engineers. And I was astonished and I was surprised by what they told me. And I told them they'd better go back to the European Commission because they had no idea what about what we were talking about. They had no idea what energy inspection is supposed to meet. They were just discussing opening up all professions and they were considering uh, possibly letting anyone do that, just as long as people were trained, be they taxi drivers or the bakers. They they would be made inspectors. At least I convinced them that we have to have engineers, engineers alone. We have to train them. They didn't agree with me, I know, says Mr. Spritzi. So when we had to amend the legislation, we received the instructions of the Ministry, the Ministry of Finance, because you see, I think it was quite by accident that Mr. Papakostadino, then Minister, added a sentence. Maybe he didn't know what this was all about. The minimum became maximum. No, Mr. Papakostadino was a tough negotiator. He was very diligent. Well, in any case, this is contradictory. There is a contrast between the national legislation, the or you rather, and the EU legislation. So we have to change that. We have to change that minimum term maximum. 
When it comes to licenses, Mr. Spades, everyone, what we abided by, and it would still there is quite important, nobody can start working as an energy inspector if this individual has not taken the exam, has not taken the test, has, is not a member of the technical chamber, and if this individual is not provided able proof to the ministry that they've taken the test successfully. So we managed to win that as well. So yes, we lost in the case of the minimum fee and maximum, but everything else worked out. When it comes to space management now, since 1981, when at the time of Andoni Stritzis, we tried to properly manage areas and spaces, what's missing is not a spatial plan, nor is the legislation missing. It's just that no one since the time, no one, including engineers, tried to put in practice what we needed to do in order for us to have growth, growth which we aspire to, growth which we want to make sustainable and which we all agree that it needs to be sustainable. Unfortunately, the system has thrown everyone in the same basket. But we shouldn't just act and react on an individual basis. To me, the most important thing is for us to change, change our own mentalities, especially the mentalities of the engineers who had a role to play and who should be playing a role. They have to have clear positions and be clear in their actions. I think we have a couple of minutes. Should you have questions for Mr. Spritzis? Or else, I guess, we can have a break, coffee break, and then we will be back at a quarter to 12. Do not forget about Monday at noon outside the Ministry of Labour, says Mr. Spritzis.